Hey what's up guys welcome to my channel. Continuing from where we left off let's first create our service and back it using some tests so that we can confirm that we are able to make a time entry to the database through our service file. So what I will do is first of all create a service file or a service class. And I will not add anything much in it. Instead, I will first create my test for the service. So I have my time entry service test. In here, the first test will be it makes a time entry with the time entry data. So what are we doing over here? Let's just say to the service, we will pass user ID. Like so, we will pass the client ID. We will pass the project ID as well. And the issue. Then the only two things left are description and time and with this fake data that I have is at part of my arrange why don't I create an instance of the service and I would expect that the time entry service will have a method in it called add time entry which will be responsible for creating the time entry and I will pass the entire data to it. Something like add this. Now obviously I don't have this method so I'll just copy this name and with this I would just assume that that function or that method right of that service class just created the thing okay and then we can do assert count time entries one which means I'm expecting that there will be one entry in the time entries table and assert that the database has name of the database table and the conditions and what I will do is I'll pass the entire data. So I'm expecting one record and that record needs to go through this where clause and it should come out as that one particular record. So how do we do that? Because this is going to fail. We all know it, right? So to pass this, we need to do the implementation and the time entry implementation right now at the service level is quite straightforward. I'll have return time entry. Now I'm doing this inside the date service file just so that you know if there are any side effects if there are certain things that I want to additionally do I will do that inside this file rather than doing it inside the controller so that I can reuse that method anyway. Okay and this is typically the pattern that I follow and this is not the only way but Obviously, it allows me to have that separation of concern, nothing else. Okay, and with this in place, I'll also give you a quick thing that, as I said in my previous video, we will have two ways of adding time entries. One is add time entry, which basically means I add the description, the time for a particular issue, and I'm expecting that the issue based on the issue right we will get the project the client and all those st good stuff okay which means you have already done the work and you know how much time you have spent the second user journey is that this user wants to track the time through our application so it clicks so this user clicks on the start button and the time clock starts ticking and at some point the user clicks on the stop button so we won't do the implementation 
but we will have a start time entry and a end time entry maybe okay and i'll just keep this in place nothing really which needs the test to pass and we have started at failing right i know why um in the migration i made a mistake time entry table started at can be nullable right with this done ideally the test should pass let's see yeah we have a green which basically means now our service is ready to add a new time entry but then obviously this is not how we will create the time entries right because this is just the service we need a little more than what we have right now uh, we need an route per se so let's just say we want to have something like uh, we will create a resource maybe time entry um, we have everything plural so time entries and we will have a time entry controller let's just create that time entry controller hmm. okay so i think it is already there because the previous one was present right okay that's that's not a problem i'll just add the reference to it and we will only work with the store option right now okay and obviously because we are building this we will add a test because we want to first create the test we still created the controller which is fine uh, sometimes you know, we can cheat but the whole idea is that you know you have a general development which is through the test so that you are able to assert that you whatever code you are writing is correct right um, so yeah what should we name it will be an page so we will have page time entry add test in here our first test will be that it adds data when the data is proper so in here in the arrange we will first create a project wrong import and in here i'll just define that my client id is one okay and we'll create an issue that the project id is the project that we just created and then we will have some data so our expectation is that we will just pass the issue id the description along with the time and once we pass this to our api which is going to be time entries dot store and I'll, obviously i will have to do acting as something like that okay once i have done this i want to assert that the entry is created okay so obviously now this is going to fail we haven't written anything so how do we do that so let's try to back that code with the controller implementation okay so let's come over here so inside our store method first i will validate things so data equals i'll send the issue id But this is going to be sometimes because as I said, there can be situations. Actually come to think of it, I will always, yeah, I think, no, uh, there can be certain time entries which are not related to issue ID. So I'll keep it sometimes. Okay. It otherwise makes the application very rigid, very um, non-cooperative, <laughs> so as to say. Uh, the issue when when it is coming right the issue id should exist in the issues table and 
description. Now that's required. I'll even have a minimum of three. Time is obviously required. Numeric. Okay. So now with this, we will need the issue. Now I don't know if there is a way I, I know when the validation was trying to check this, right? It would have made that call. Even if it is an exist kind of query, it would have made that. And I don't know if I can use that over here, but it's one additional call. If you guys know, let me know if and you know, how, how I can get that. But what I see is there are two queries happening with the uh, almost the same kind of a thing. Okay. All right. So I get my issue. I will need the project. My issue will have the project ID. And then I'll need to populate a few more fields in the data. The first one is user ID. Because the service is just, if you remember, taking the data as is. We are not doing a lot inside the service as of now. And I don't want the service to be dependent on the auth data. So I'll pass it through the controller. Next up, I have my client ID. which obviously we can get from the project. Then we have our project ID. And yeah, then I can just do entry equals dollar service. Okay, dollar service is something which I will inject. At time entry data like so so with this entry I will redirect the user back with maybe success entry added okay and I'll keep this entry because later on I will add some events and stuff so for that and it will be easy and now I have my test passing which means if I send the data properly it will be able to make that entry all right this video is getting quite big it's almost 20 minutes of recording so why don't we speed up things a little bit and go through the tests quickly so what I will do is I'll go through some of the code that I have the first one being I'm checking whether it throws an error when all the necessary fields are not posted. So I'm passing an empty data and I'm asserting that description and time is kind of required. And because issue ID is not a required field, it doesn't have this. Okay, just a quick check. The next is I would like to assert that when I'm sending this time entry request, right, it is picking up the current logged in user and it is adding that. So how do we do that? So what I am doing over here in this test is I'm creating a user. I'm creating an issue. The issue has a project ID that has a client ID. Okay. So that I can create the entire um, time entry. I'm sending this information acting as this user. And then what I'm doing is I'm making this post call and I'm asserting that there is an entry and that entry meets the where condition where user ID equals the user which is logged in. And that's how I'm ensuring that the current user is added. Similarly, I'll have one more test, which is it assigns the client based on the project. How? Well, I'm picking this, right? Which is, you know, we, we did the user, we did, we are now doing the client where I'm saying that the project's client is being picked. So again, I set my world where I create the client, the project, the issue. I do this data acting as user. I make that post call 
and then I'm asserting that the client ID is same as the one which I created and it should pass as well. Now next up we need to check for project inside my test. I'll come over here and again I'm doing this arrange. This is my data acting as user making a post call and I'm asserting that the project ID is correct. And with this, how many tests do we have now? Wow, we're just four short of the three figure mark and um, I'm generally able to say that you know, our route where you know, the time entry will be saved is also kind of ready. So in my next video, I'll create the form and uh, that would kind of create the overall flow. But yeah, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.